In this example, we're going to look at the goodness of fit for an exponential distribution with estimated parameters. This example looks at Miss Patel, who asked her students to record the number of cars passing the school gates for a 40 minute period to use for a project in statistics. As Miss Patel has done this with her class every year for the last six years, she decides to do an investigation of her own and records the time in minutes between each car passing instead. You have a table of data and you're asked to use a chi-squared suitable of fit test to investigate Miss Patel's belief that the time between cars passing the school can be modelled by an exponential distribution. This is called a suitable of fit test, but it's the same as a goodness of fit test. It's just another name for it. So we start by looking at our seven steps for any hypothesis test. And that is we write our hypotheses. We look at the tail, the significance level. To calculate the test statistic, we first need our expected values, then a critical value. We compare the critical value in the test statistic, and we conclude as to whether we accept or reject H0 in context. Let's start by looking at our hypotheses. So our hypothesis is always nothing has changed, nothing is different, everything stays the same. So our null hypothesis, should I say, is that the exponential distribution provides an adequate model for the times between cars passing the school. The alternative to that, the alternative hypothesis, is therefore the reverse of that, and that is that the exponential distribution does not provide an adequate model for the times between cars passing the school. Then we look at the tail and the significance level. This doesn't usually get us a mark, but will help us later on, particularly with the critical value. A chi-squared suitable of fit or goodness of fit test is always one-tailed, and we always look at the upper tail. In this particular question, we have not been asked for a specific significance level, so we're going to use the 5% significance level that is used most common. Those of you doing A-level statistics will be told on the front of your exam paper to use a 5% significance level if not specified. Then to work out our test statistic, we need our expected values. This is what is slightly different to a goodness of fit test without estimation of parameters. So if I just rearrange my data to look a little neater, this is the same data just put in a different table. To be able to work out my expected values, I need to know the probability using the said distribution. So using a exponential distribution, I need the parameter lambda. It has not been given in this question, so I need to use an estimation for lambda. If lambda is unknown, I can estimate using x bar, the sample mean. So I can work out from this data by using the midpoints of the times and the frequencies that x bar is 2.80645. I've done that on my calculator using midpoints and frequency. We should know that the mean of an exponential distribution is 1 over lambda. So x bar, the sample mean, is approximately 1 over lambda which means 1 over lambda is my value 2.80645. And if I just rearrange that equation, I can get that lambda is 1 over 2.80645, so lambda is approximately 0 0.3563. Now I have my value from lambda, I can put that into the equation for the exponential distribution to get my probabilities. So between 0 and 2, I get a probability of 0.50963, between 2 and 4, I get a probability of 0.24991. Between 4 and 6, I get a probability of 0.12255. A probability of 6, uh, between 6 and 8, I get a probability of 0.06009. For between 8 and 10, I get a probability of 0.02947. And the last one between 10 and 40 is 0.02835. Now I have my probabilities using the exponential distribution with the lambda I've estimated, I can work out the expected values. My expected value is the probability using the distribution times by the total frequency. If I add up the frequencies for this example, I get 31. So I'm going to multiply each of those probabilities by 31. 
it gives me 15.7985, 7 7.74721, 3.7905, 1.86279, 0.91357 and 0.87885. In your head, there should be a little warning sign going off because looking at those E values, I have four of them that are less than five. We cannot use the chi-squared goodness of fit test if I have expected values less than five. So to redeem this, I need to combine categories. So I can combine the four to six, six to eight, eight to 10 and 10 to 40 to make a four to 40 group. To get the frequency, I add up those four frequencies, 0, 2, 1 and 1, that gives me 4. I can then work out my probabilities and times that by 31 to get a new E value, which is now greater than 7 and therefore all my E values can be used in my goodness of fit test. Now I have my expected values, I can calculate the test statistic. So I've just neaten the table up, I've got rid of all the categories that I've joined together and I've just put the 4 to 40 group at the bottom. The formula for the test statistic is the sum of O minus E all squared over E. So I'm just going to work out my differences here, my O minus E's. And then I'm going to square them and divide by E to give me my contributions to the test statistic. If I add those three values together, I get my test statistic, which is 3.70722. Next, I need to calculate my critical value. So the critical value, I need the degrees of freedom. This is the number of classes or the number of categories minus one. And then because I've had to estimate my parameter lambda, I need to subtract an extra one. This is the bit that is different because I'm estimating parameters. So I've shrunk this down to three categories, 0 to 2, 2 to 4 and 4 to 40. So I have 3 take away 1, take away 1 means my degrees of freedom is 1. That is quite a low degrees of freedom. It's the smallest one I can use, which means my critical value is going to be small. So my likelihood for accepting is being reduced dramatically. So I turn to table six, the percentage points of the chi-squared distribution, and I go along the one degree of freedom row. We said we were using a 5% level of significance, and because it is upper one-tailed, I'm looking down the 0 0.95 column. And where they cross over, I get a value of 3.841, and that is my critical value for this test. To compare the critical value in test statistic, I'm going to draw myself a chi-squared distribution, and I'm going to put a cutoff point of 3.841 for my critical value. And then I'm going to put my test statistic on that graph and see where it lies. So I can see it's ever so slightly to the left of that critical value in the belly of the diagram. And therefore, in my conclusion, I can say that I accept in the belly, reject in the tail, so we accept H0. And putting that into the context of the question, looking at my hypotheses, I can say that therefore there is significant evidence to suggest that the exponential distribution provides an adequate model for the times between cars passing the school.